When you hear the words gene editing, what comes to mind? If it's stuff like this. You could design your baby's features, would you? You have specified hazel eyes, dark hair, and uh, fair skin. Le Zheng Kui stunned the scientific community with the claim he pushed the boundary no one else had. They are twin girls whose DNA he claims to have altered when they were embryos. Then you should probably know that in most countries around the world, embryo editing is currently prohibited. And researchers agree that it's unethical to edit the human genome in a heritable way given the current state of the science. But with the first gene editing therapy recently winning approval in the US and the UK, a small group of scientists are taking a harder look at using the same technology to treat genetic diseases even earlier, before damaging symptoms set in. That's where in utero gene editing, or prenatal somatic cell genome editing, comes in. The field of prenatal uh, genome editing is not about germline editing. This is not about editing embryos in a dish. This is really um, trying to provide a better medical care for a fetus in the second or third trimester who would otherwise be born with a severe genetic disease. Research in this area is still years away from clinical trials, but here's how it would work. There are some groundbreaking therapies that are currently being approved, for example, genome editing for sickle cell disease. Currently, what those therapies require is that you harvest the patient's bone marrow, you edit those cells in the dish to correct the mutation, and then you place them back into the patient. So all of that, you can imagine, costs a, a lot of money, more than $2 million um, per patient, and of course has some uh, potential side effects. So imagine replacing that entire protocol with a single umbilical vein injection of a very sophisticated genome editor and delivery rocket ship that finds the right cell, edits the gene precisely in that spot, and prevents the disease from happening in the first place. So while many companies are developing postnatal gene editing treatments, there are four main reasons why some scientists believe that in utero gene editing might be an advantageous approach. One, the small size of the fetus means a much smaller dose of the therapy will be required to treat enough cells to change the course of the disease. Two, a fetus is immunologically immature, which means that CRISPR components, specifically the Cas9 protein, can be delivered without an immune response. The fetus would be able to pick it up better than a newborn baby whose immune system might try to ward it off. Three, because a fetus, by nature, is growing, its cells are multiplying and proliferating rapidly. By delivering gene editing treatments at this stage, stem and progenitor cells of multiple organs can be targeted, and the therapeutic changes will spread through subsequent cell divisions. And four, by treating a fetus in utero, it treats the disease prior to birth, preventing the onset of symptoms and irreversible damage. There are many conditions, such as pulmonary diseases, which do not have adequate postnatal treatment and could be prevented with in utero therapy. So if all this sounds like far future science fiction, you're not alone, but it actually might arrive sooner than you think. There are preclinical studies underway with mice, sheep, and monkeys to try to answer some of these basic questions we have around in utero gene therapy, such as, will the therapy accidentally affect a fetus's germline? Because the treatment is given in utero, will it compromise the mother's health? The field of genome editing, of course, is moving in leaps and bounds, so I think it's hard to predict exactly when we're going to you know, achieve the kind of safety and efficacy we need to treat a patient. The best I can say is I'm really hoping it'll be within my career. <laughs> the World Health Organization estimates that approximately 10,000 human diseases are caused by mutations in single genes. If doctors can safely treat them in utero, the more ethically fraught enterprise of embryo editing begins to look even less compelling. Most importantly though, it could potentially improve the quality of people's lives before they've even started. <laughs>